Hi everybody, uh, my name is Jimmy Carroll. I'm the Vice President of Operations at Tech B2B Marketing. We're here on the Manufacturing Matters Podcast. I have the pleasure of being joined by Kathy Rinney and Lauren Vandemark of Flexline Automation, along with my colleague Amanda. Uh, Kathy and Lauren, thank you so much for taking the time today. It's really nice to meet you and have you on. Great Absolutely. to meet you. It's a pleasure. Yeah, thanks very much. So, so Flexline Automation, could you tell us a little bit about, uh, first of all, tell us about your company and what you, what you both do there? You want to take this one? Oh no, I'm happy. <laughs> Flexline Automation, we've been around for, this will be our 40th year. Um, we started out mainly in conveyors and we have been conveyor system integrators for about 30 years and then about 10 years ago or 10 years out from that, we realized that the market was changing and that we were going to have to change with it or we were going to go by way of the dinosaur. So we started to integrate more robotics and other type of ancillary equipment into our offering. And um, Lauren actually has been with the company her entire life. <laughs> yeah, I've been answering phones since I could toddle. <laughs> her, her dad and I founded Flexline with his parents. We started it in our farm shop, literally in the bay in our machine shed right next to the combine. So we have very humble beginnings and um, we're really rooted in those kind of solid Midwestern farm values. And so Lauren has literally grown up in the company. It's true. I always thought that babies would be delivered via UPS. Um, she kind of so. That's. Uh, I, so so thank you for that. I, I do want to ask about robotics, obviously. But one thing I wanted to ask about is is conveyor systems. Um, automation systems today continue to evolve and expand as customer need customer needs grow and uh, things like the labor shortage kind of speed up the need for automation for some companies or the need to adopt further automation or whatever. So how have conveyor systems, how has conveyor technology needed to expand or evolve with these automation systems over time? Well, we actually have had a very innovative product line from day one because our main conveyor product line was a flexible tabletop conveyor system. And this allowed us to be able to do overhead, um, to do a lot of uh, buffer, systems. buffer systems, vertical, tight horizontal bins, things that would make the best use of manufacturing space. Because what manufacturers really have a problem with is they need to get more machines in, right, to, to have more productivity. So if you can get parts to those machines or away from those machines and utilize space overhead, that was very innovative in its time. Today, we're seeing AI incorporated into conveyor systems. We're seeing... Um, still a lot of new product development as far as escapements and, and all of the ancillary kind of automation things. You, you have anything that you can throw yeah, into that? Yeah, I mean, conveyors, a lot of people seem to believe that conveyors just aren't cool anymore, right? Like, you know, even 15 years ago, conveyors were looked at as more than just something that you get on Granger and order like a 10-foot straight conveyor. But really, Conveyors still have a very important place in material handling. I mean, yes, robots are really sexy. Everybody wants an AMR or an AGV, it seems like. But sometimes simple is best, right? Mm -hmm. And a simple solution can be a much more robust solution and can really still have a very important place in material handling. You can't beat a hard knock and conveyor, you know? I mean, they're hard to, to have issues with, you know, robot you have sometimes some issues with programming, things like that. You put a conveyor in and it's, it's pretty much set it and forget it. Sure, and it sure. just does what it needs to do for as long as it needs to do it. Yeah, I mean, it's a critical part of so many systems, right? It, it absolutely is. And being able to do, we have some a really great space-saving compact spirals. So we can actually elevate product in a very, very tight footprint, which is really beneficial. Again, space-saving. Um, and the ability for a conveyor to work with a robot is really important because, you know, a lot of people think you have one or the other and they actually work together. I mean, all automation equipment is designed to work together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's one of the benefits of working with an integrator like us is we really understand how to make all of those different parts communicate and work together to the best, um, to the best overall efficiency of the system. Mm -hmm. You know, if you go through, yeah, you can go in and you can buy this from over here and this from over here and you can take all of those pieces and integrate them in yourself. But a lot of times there's 
some efficiency that we bring to that process that I think a lot of manufacturers can benefit from. Well, after sure. 40 years, we kind of learned some tricks. <laughs> you yeah. know, after 40 years, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. I guess that those insurance guys say that, but I mean, we can probably <laughs> say that too. Um, so what we bring to the table is a more tailored uh, kind of approach, and we use that 40 years of experience in knowing what products would be best fitted. I mean, you can't go on to Granger or McMaster Car, so you can you can buy stuff, but how do you know where to start and what to buy? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and and the beautiful thing about working with an integrator like our company is that we can take this project from start to finish. We can incorporate vision systems. We can incorporate, you know. Um, Carton erectors, palletizers, you know, mm -hmm. labelers, you know, whatever you need, yep. checkwares, the, the whole thing. And, you know, so we make that easy. We make it easy to, to automate. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like a one stop shop. It is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I kind of want to take a step backwards in the conversation a little bit because you had mentioned starting the business with your husband in your barn. And I was kind of curious about that. I was wondering if you could kind of expand was this kind of a venture that you wanted to go in, what brought as a, you know, a woman business owner, um, I mean. Oh, it was absolutely not at all and what is I your, wanted to go into. <laughs> <laughs> was this your husband's idea? And again, I guess, what was the evolution that took you to be the president of this well, company? Well, you know, I mean, I grew up on a farm, right? And um, I have one sister. My dad had two daughters after my sister. When I came along, he kind of realized, well, this is it. This is, this is as good as I'm going to get, right? <laughs> so he took me <laughs> and kind of tried to guide me. I mean, I took tractors apart and rebuilt equipment and farmed and hunted and fished and did all of the things that a son would do. And so he prepared me for, you know, having the ingenuity, having, you know, just the, the stick to it us the ability to just tackle these projects and get them done because that's how you handle things on a farm. So fast forward, I meet my husband and um, I'm going to school. He was still going to school at that time. And his dad was in industrial filtration. And we were kind of at a point, I was, I was working for the um, Department of Commerce and I was kind of liking what I, my government job, right? And so we had this opportunity to get involved with the conveyors and he wanted to do it and I totally didn't. And so um, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, I got involved and basically I was the gopher. I was the one that set up the inventory. I was the one that, you Had know, the jobs that they didn't want to have. Yeah, because, you know, but I did a lot of turning of the wrenches and looking back, I'm really happy to have had that kind of um, immersion into this industry because I didn't have any formal training in automation. You know, I'm, I'm bringing that farm ingenuity. I'm bringing 40 years of experience. You know, uh, that's what I bring to the table. And so I, I really fell into it. I wasn't the most willing, but I did it. I'm glad. As, as things, I ended up being the president because I'm naturally bossy, right? <laughs> and so um, in the early years of our business, it was really hard because we would like fight over decisions and things like that because it's really tough when you work with your spouse and then throw your in-laws in there. It's really tough. <laughs> But, um, so we drew these circles and it was pretty much a Venn diagram and, you know, we had just this small s sliver where, where we would interchange and, and that's otherwise... where I wound up having to work. <laughs> I, just I was going to gonna get, <laughs> yeah. make sure I brought you in here. Yeah, well, and, and, you know, so, so it just, just naturally evolved that I was the one that was making a lot of the management decisions because my husband was very much the, the technical, the engineer. And while I was still doing that and traveling and, and on site and doing that kind of thing too, it was just kind of we migrated into our areas of expertise and we finally, after 40 years, don't fight about whose decisions are what anymore. And Lauren, you know, has been in the business. She left the business for a short time. Yeah, I went and I um, got my master's in marketing at Mississippi State. So I worked at Flexline, took about a two year hiatus, and then I've been back ever since. So yeah. nice. And um, what has it been like for you? I mean, oh, I'm boy. curious on both standpoints because you've been in the industry for 40 years. So you've <laughs> seen 
the women's place in this space evolve. And you've come in as a young, you know, a millennial, kind of with a different viewpoint where women were encouraged to enter all these different industries or do different whatever they wanted to do, do mm -hmm. STEM jobs. So what has been like for you to come into this and see it? And it's It's been really, really nice. I mean, I was really, really lucky growing up with, obviously, my mom is a strong female role model in this industry. And there were also, um, so in FlexLink, which is the tabletop conveyor system that we started with and that we still work with most frequently, there were uh, two other female presidents of conveyor companies. Mm -hmm. And so I got to be exposed to them as well. So I really didn't have any concept that women couldn't be presidents of automation companies or anything like that. So whenever I first, you know, went to my first pack expo in God, 2006, not seeing women all over the place was actually kind of interesting because I was like, wait a minute, I know Joan and I know Dana and I know my mom, where, <laughs> where are all of these other women? And so it's been really interesting, especially over the last 10 years to see more and more women getting into the industry because there's no reason that we shouldn't have been here this entire time. Absolutely. Well, yeah, I mean, when I was a kid, basically, my guidance counselors, the pathway was, do you want to be a nurse? Do you want to be a homemaker? Do you want to be a teacher? Um, you know, we were very limited. Fortunately, my dad kind of blew that whole stereotype out of the water because he's like, oh, well, you want to be a mechanic? You can be a mechanic. You know, you want to work construction. And I did build houses for a short amount of time before. And so, you know, I explored a lot of different things. I had a lot of opportunity that I just took. Um, I think generations today have that opportunity and it's more of a given, you know? I mean, I, I invaded that space. <laughs> and, and I did it and I had a lot of fun with it. And I, I have to say that being a woman in this industry is amazing because, you know, I, I can have a level of vulnerability and honesty that I don't think my men counterparts can have. And that's really Absolutely. unfortunate. I, I can go into a meeting and be like, oh, geez, I don't know, I screwed this up, or, or I don't know, let me find out. And, and that's okay, and everybody's okay with me saying that. Well, you can also throw things out, like, have you considered this? And it's not an attack to right. ask a male engineer as a woman, like, hey, have you thought of everything? Whereas a lot of times I find that if my male counterparts ask those questions, there's some defensiveness that mm. innately comes up. Yeah, so we and don't so have that to deal with. And so it's really, really nice to be a part of those conversations. So that part, you know, and yeah, over the years, I mean, I, I related the story about how I walked into the conference room and was asked to make coffee one day. And I made the cup of coffee and I handled it to the gentleman and I left the conference room. And then I was brought back into the conference room as the president of the company. So, you know, I mean, it's not that, but I did not take that personally, you know, and I make a pretty decent cup of coffee <laughs> and I'm, I'm not gonna lie. So, I mean, I've just never taken any of it personally. I have worked side by side with a lot of gentlemen that I've learned so much from. And I think as women in this industry, it is very important for us to value not only the, the feminine qualities that we're bringing to, to the table, but also to appreciate the men that we work alongside of. Because I think together, that partnership really strengthens what we can offer to customers. And, and it's really important. I mean, women, we have the soft skills. And I mean, we have the other skills as well, but you know, I mean, we are the doers. We are the, it, it's, it's just, I think it's been easier for me to be in this business as a woman than it would have ever been for me to be a man. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. It's nice from a male perspective. It's, you know, I think it's kind of a generational thing. Uh, for me, I, some of the best bosses I've ever had are female. And you know, in the, in the past, like in publishing and marketing, there's, there's plenty of females there and that's, that's fine. But like in, in general automation or manufacturing, maybe there's less females. So for me, it's in the past anyway, right? So now it's nice to start seeing and meeting and talking to people like you to show people out there like maybe um, 
girls or women that are in high school or in college oh, to say, well, I can go do that if I want to. I don't have to go to the tr you know, traditional career path. Right, like, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I and think I, part of that too is people are getting exposed more and more through podcasts like this one and through a variety of social media to what manufacturing really is because as an industry we really need to be better about selling ourselves to those students and mm -hmm. educating them that the jobs yeah, for in sure. manufacturing are not nearly as sucky as what one thinks that they are, right? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. it's yeah. not I love Lucy on the chocolate line manufacturing anymore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah totally. It's not just like, you know, flipping things over or making right. sure the box, it, it, it's, it's any range of jobs. It could be yeah. marketing, it yeah. could be executive level job. Like, it, it, a, well, even if you're on the factory floor, it could be running, um, watching a robot right, flip those boxes right, around. Right. Yeah. It could be, well, you know, the greatest thing about my job is problem solving. And it's not only executive level problem solving or HR or marketing. I mean, it's it could be like how I, you'll find me out running airlines sometimes if, if the guys are busy and, and I've got a minute and they need a hand. Hey, I'm happy to throw in. And, you know, I, I like to stay out on the floor and in touch with what's going on and learn what's going on. And, you know, this marketing over here, we were we were at uh, PacX and the robot had a little glitch and I was programming the robot and she's throwing out Snapchats. Look, it's so easy, even the company president can do it, right? So, you know. I guess that's what happens you when you it's your mom. Know. That my, sometimes I say things without thinking, which gets me in trouble a lot well, more. I mean, the they're cooter. funny. But I'm sure that that was a really well-followed post it or well-engaged I mean, with. It, absolutely, it's approachable, yeah. it's funny, you know, well, from a marketing perspective, but, and it's you know great. What? There's a lot of operations though like being completely honest right that that don't have the people that are trained you know yeah. they need to see that robots are easy to operate yeah. so as well, it is true. a joke yeah. right? <laughs> not everybody yeah. is paying for the highest level engineer so right. if you can show them that they can upskill their current worker and just teach them how to use that I think yeah. that's you well, know I'm a good example of that I guess yeah. <laughs> see, you can you your current yeah. worker. Uh, <laughs> but I think that's that's really interesting did you want to um, I did want to ask about um, a couple of uh, robot-related questions, I guess you could say. Okay. Um, UR Plus is a, this ecosystem of universal robots. Uh, everyone knows universal robots, collaborative robots, or cobots, as everyone calls them. Um, you've got a new product that is UR Plus certified, is that right? Yeah. Um, so our Box Easy, which is a collaborative robot box director, just recently became a UR Plus solution. And using that, we can erect multiple sizes of cartons without having to have the changeover that you would have with a traditional carton erector. Often from a single pick point. In a really, really small footprint. You know, earlier mom was talking about how space in a manufacturing facility is at a premium. Mm -hmm. And this is really a case in point of that. Um, we can then, since we are handling the container, still all with the uh, gripper and the end of arm tooling on the robot, then we can maintain that box through the picking, erection, and placing process so we can discharge pretty much anywhere that you would want it to be, whether that's in a gravity queue with a lane designated for each box size or onto a conveyor, into a cart. We can even palletize mm. that same box without ever changing over our end of arm tooling. Mm. And uh, we can design that end of arm tooling to even be able to be used to case pack if the rate allows. So it's pretty flexible Traditional yeah. case erector takes up a huge chunk of real estate and usually you know you get maybe one or two package sizes with a lot of changeover right and so the fact that we can have either horizontal or vertical magazines we can have a multitude of, of box sizes based on the robot reach based on the size of the box that kind of thing I mean we just really bring flexibility to that task that hasn't been there before yeah, and, and that kind of ties into something I wanted to ask about, like warehouse automation in general, right? So market intelligence company Interact Analysis predicts modest growth for warehouse automation in 2024, but double digit growth in the years to follow, right? What are the, well, I want to ask you what you think the growth drivers are behind that, but, but you kind of talked about one thing that I think is maybe a main growth driver there, and that's ease of use. So like UR Plus in general, is, it's yeah. one of the things that makes them so popular, I think, is that it's relatively easy to use. But from your perspective, what else do you think some of the, are some of the growth drivers behind uh, the increase in, in warehouse automation? Well, I mean, everybody is short-staffed. Yeah. That's, uh, and, and safety. You know, 
I was going to say. Back that. in my day, safety was a luxury. You know, it wasn't something that people spent money on because you just, that wasn't what you did, you know, workers came, workers went, <laughs> and that's not the case anymore. No. So safety is is really important, and I think automation provides a very safe workplace. Uh, and it's not just safety, it's also the employees that places are able to get now, they want a more rewarding job, right? They Absolutely. don't want to stand there and erect cardboard boxes all day oh. because it's boring and you get cardboard I can cuts. And tell you from unerecting boxes at trade shows all day, <laughs> I would not want that job. Yeah, yeah. No. absolutely. No. Um, and so it's a solution like ours, you know, it's providing the employees a job that's more fulfilling because they're able to watch the robots work to make sure that they're working properly. The same employee can look over several workstations. They're not hurting their shoulder because they're having to palletize heavy boxes. The right. robot can do that for them. Mm -hmm. They're not throwing out their back trying to lift pallets over their head because they've integrated like a Palomat inline pallet magazine. I mean, there are all of these wonderful automation solutions that really improve safety and fulfillment in the in the yeah. in we the had warehouse a great AGVs industry and AMRs as well she mentioned the uh, pallet dispensers you know um, we're doing a lot more work in the warehouse space and and that is exactly ease of use and and just employee satisfaction mm -hmm. morale and really. safety i mean people need to want to go to work. I think it ties back into that conversation you were having earlier about making this manufacturing industry more appealing to people, yeah, oh, right? absolutely. Making it safer, making people want to go to work, right. and making it, I get to go to work and wear those cool exoskeletons. <laughs> exactly. I get to go to work and use that cool thing. Something you know, fulfilling. Yeah. We all like cool technology. Who doesn't want to use, you know, a oh, new absolutely. camera? Or a new yeah, I mean, we installed some mobile industrial robot, robots in a plant and people were taking selfies with them, you know, right. and, and they thought it was really cool that they were, that they had that. Once they got past the robot's going to steal my job face. Yeah. Right. Because that's the first of course, thing. Yeah. Of course. That's the yeah. first thing um, that, that you encounter when you deploy any type of how do you system. how do you address that conversation well I, I yourself frankly oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I feel like so much of what I do whenever I'm doing sales is not necessarily even selling the product it's no no it's okay you can look at automation it's fine you're not betraying someone by wanting exactly. to make your employees lives better and really reframing that and not just eliminating the dull, dirty, and dangerous jobs. We're eliminating the depressing jobs, right? Like, Seriously. stuff you don't yeah. want to do. But I mean, we, we faced this with the taxi driver last night. We get in the taxi, he's like, where are you going? Only oh, A3 conference, what do you do? Robotics, oh, you're taking everybody's jobs. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, we're not. <laughs> Interesting. That's, that that's your first takeaway. Yeah, that was, that yeah. was the first thing. And but, but, but you know what? By the time we got out, he was like, hey, yeah, I never thought of it that right. way before. So I think just having conversations and telling people, frankly and straight up, and let's not beat around the bush. It's like, you know, I'm not here for your job. Um, I'm here for the job you, know. you didn't want to do. Right? <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I have heard some stories of that where people have gone to automation because they had a job listing up for so and, long and no and, one took it. It's yeah. not... It, nobody wanted the job. It's not that we're taking it from somebody. Right. It's that we need something or and, someone to know, do this. You know, as companies automate, that allows them to then expand and add more of right. the jobs that people are interested in pursuing. Mm -hmm. You right. get better jobs because you get the technician jobs. You get the ones that are fulfilling for a human to do. One mm -hmm. of our local private label food manufacturers, they're down 1,500 employees over three plants. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah. And so they are really looking at automation to, to fill that void. Mm -hmm. And you know, and it not only fills the void, but it improves the life of the people that are working there. Yeah. You know, their jobs do get easier and they do get better. And so I mean, we just have to have those open conversations. But you have to call it out. You know, you can't walk into the plant and not talk about the elephant in the room, right? Yeah. You might yeah. as well just walk over to that group of employees and just throw it down. <laughs> Yeah, well, I know you guys are not happy to see us. Yeah, <laughs> and, but here's why you should be. Yeah. yeah, and and just have those conversations and and I think just the honest ability to to, to talk about it really then you know well, it it dis it's disarming. Yeah, the, it's it does alleviating that because 
you know, whenever, a lot of times, right, when this industry, you're not talking to the people on the line who are the ones that are really impacted by introducing right. automation. And they're we the have, ones that can make or break a project. Yeah. You know, and you we, don't sell the guys at the very end of the line. It doesn't matter how many people in the upper management are, are pro mm -hmm. your project. Your project is going to tank. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you've got to go out on the line and you've got to make friends with those people and you have to really show them that improvement if you want their buy-in and at the end of the day if you don't have their buy-in yeah <laughs> you, no one's going to use it right exactly no well, one they're uses gonna it sabotage it yeah. you know i mean that's what people do they're yeah. like oh well this robot <laughs> right <laughs> he's not working see no yeah. it just protective stops for no reason yeah, whatsoever and, and so have you guys actually seen that oh absolutely oh wow <laughs> yeah sure Wow. So I, I think it's really important that you have those honest conversations and not just with upper management, but you, you talk to the people that are using the technology and are going to be most impacted by the technology openly. And, and that's, you just, you just have to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Um, I, I don't have much else that we've covered a lot. I, yeah, <laughs> we really have. <laughs> there, yeah, sorry. No, no, you're okay. I was toning in on you. Is there anything else? Yeah, we should talk about. Well, I don't know. We could talk all day because that's how we are. <laughs> right. But Agree. We are Verbose, I think, yeah. is the <laughs> word. Wow. That's a kind way to put it. Well, <laughs> no, fair enough. Uh, if anybody wants to learn more about your company, where, what's the website? Uh, we are at flex-lineautomation.com. All right. It's interesting, though. I am the Conveyor Cougar, and I'm going to give myself a plug. That is my LinkedIn. It's tremendous. It's, I love it's the it. Conveyor Cougar. And the Smarty other one Pants over here into the floor. is another one that I can tell you. <laughs> we, we left a meeting one day with the sales meeting with these young engineers, and I walked out and I'm like, when did I become the old lady in the room? You know, when did this happen? I just feel like, God, I feel like such a cougar. And she's like, yeah, mom, you're the Conveyor Cougar. And I'm like, yeah. Wait a minute. That's great. I am That's the Conveyor great. Cougar. And so, Whenever I was in high school, right, I, I we would go to the mall, which is a very dated thing now. But yeah, so we'd go into like Spencer's Gifts, oh, yeah. and I remember <laughs> yeah. the guy at Spencer's Gifts once was like, "Oh my God, you're so lucky. Your mom is so cool." And I just at like 13 wanted to melt into the floor. Yeah, and now I get to live that every day of my professional life. So every day, my mom is still so cool. Right. Oh my God. Oh, and and every cougar. day, I make it my goal to try to give her something cringeworthy. <laughs> you know? That's what succeeds. moms do. And right? I, that's, that's what I, I, it's like what I aspire towards is just giving her something <laughs> and cringeworthy. And one day it'll be you. <laughs> right? yeah. And it is. She's right now the conveyor kitten, but you know. Oh I, my I, gosh, I love it. <laughs> she hates it, which makes me love it more. Not oh, gonna lie. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. It was a pleasure Thanks to have you Thanks for having us, guys. Oh, of we course. appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks yes. very much. This is uh, if, if anyone has any questions, comments, or wants to reach out, uh, manufacturingmatters.com. Um, Kathy, Lauren, thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. Pleasure to be here. You too.